Good day to you creatures of the multiverse, I'm Ansega, and I am taking way too goddamn long with making this video. Enjoy. Gex is one of those game series that I try occasionally. I'm not necessarily a fan of or anything, but you know, I play them from time to time, try and get into them. I don't like the side scrollers, but from what I remember playing, the 3D games were at the least alright. One day, on a top 20 PS1 soundtracks video, I heard a preview of this song, Gex 3's Clueless in Seattle, and had to hear more. I love the sneaky feel to the instrumentation in this song especially with the little piano. This scared a lot of young N64 and PlayStation players, and I can see why. Okay, maybe some people who played Klonoa Daughter Phantom Isle found this thing creepy. And though the boss is easy to beat, Wongo Lango's theme makes you feel so cool while you do it. It's just called cool, the Wongo Lango, if you're wondering. Yeah! Animal Crossing on the GameCube is an okay game, but one part of it I really love is the Mr. Rossetti theme. And this mole here pops up when you quit the game without saving. And he scared a lot of millennial kids. Why were people scared of him when they could have just zoned out to this groovy music for a while? I mentioned that Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom was one of my favourite collectathon games. Well, Banjo-Kazooie on N64 is my favourite. And this spot was going to go to Spiral Mountain, and then the pause music. This is the perfect song of nothing, when you're just sitting, doing nothing and thinking about either nothing or who the hell knows. Brownies. If you've played a mobile game in the last decade or so, you know this game. No way around it. And chances are, you also know the iconic theme. Subway Surfers is a simple game. And the theme does what it needs to for a simple game. 
it's relatively fast, energetic, upbeat and catchy. Also, this game is nearly 12 years old. Now let's sink in. Here we are with another well-known and truly iconic theme, the Wii Sports theme. I first heard this song in Wii Safety Gone Too Far, which if you haven't watched it already, hilarious video, check it out. This song is brilliantly upbeat and memorable, but also sounds like a credits theme for a person's life, if lives had credit theme that. And that person, had an awesome life. And we love the song for all of that. And I was saying how Subway Surfers is nearly 12. Well, what have I told you? That Wii Sports is old enough to drive and even to drink in the UK. Crazy. Pac-Man World is a decent little platformer. I haven't played too far into it, but as we're aware, internet. And once again, while looking through favourite PS1 music videos, a different one this time, I heard this song, Far Out from Pac-Man World. This song is beautiful, to say the least. It wraps you in the world of the Pac-Man, or should I say, out of the Bad space jokes. It really captures the mystical and magical feeling of space and can really make you reflect on how small we truly are. Or I'm overthinking a game with a knockoff spin dash. As a game, I find SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge to be just okay. But the best thing about the game is this song. Jelly Fields. Uh, wait, Jelly Fields. Not Jelly Fish Fields. Uh, Alright then. This song is generally upbeat and catchy, yet also quite chill. Which I can say about this game's soundtrack overall. It sure is a shame that the game isn't always the latter. Looking at you pointy yellow fish enemies.
Why yes, I am obsessed with Caddicorus. How could you tell? In 12th place, we have another main theme. The one from Croc. And this theme is so positive and jazzy and I love the way it builds up to gradually be louder. It reminds me quite a bit of Super Mario 3D World, which makes sense considering Argonaut were originally developing a Yoshi game for the Nintendo 64. So, as you'd expect, this game is very happy, and this song is a good example of that. Just missing out on the top half of the list, we have Egad Salab from Luigi's Mansion. I got nothing, just listen. I'm someone who has a handful of go-to happy games and the first one that I think of is Loco Roco. I love Loco Roco, if not for the visuals and music alone, it's just so happy. And this song is that. The vocals, which aren't Japanese by the way, the Loco Roco speak in their own fictional language, are cute. The backing track is upbeat, and if this doesn't make you feel happy, I don't know what to say. This game is Japan Incarnate. Viv Ribbon is my second favourite rhythm game of all time and the fifth main track in the game, Overflowing Emotions, is just Sublime and very appropriately named. I love the changes in tempo, the vocant from energy and I quite like the vocals even if I do need subtitles for a lot of it. The song seems to either be about a mother's feelings towards her child or someone who takes care of a partner like a child, or about a partner who is neglected as a child, child, child. I don't know, can't tell, still figuring that out. Song's still awesome though. This song gives me overflowing emotions.
There are a bunch of songs that could have gone on this list from the Mario series. Bob on Battlefield from Mario 64, Coconut Mall from Mario Kart Wii, or Super Mario Bros. 3's Overworld theme. But the one song in this series that stands out the most to me is the underwater theme from the 1985 aged classic that is Super Mario Bros. And if you bring up number 11, this is a Mario game and Luigi's Mansion is a Luigi game, so HA! People dance to this at their wedding. I love how orchestral this one is, along with being so relaxed. I can listen to this almost any time. It's good for gaming, scripting videos, just chilling out or sleeping, etc. But not jogging. Definitely not jogging. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna bring it down like this, y'all. I'm gonna let this guy who doesn't know what his hair's like know that this song rules the world. Yeah, this song sounds so good all the time. Yeah, that's right. Goes a little something like this. Stay with me now. Here we go. In parentheses, this is the best song in the Parappa series. And no matter what the deal, this song will never get stale. Parappa 2 is my favourite rhythm game ever. And th this... It it's a rap battle about noodles. How can you, how can you not love that? My blooming badger, we're talking about video game music. I love video game music. Please can you at least introduce yourself and your so bad it's good cockney accent before you do that? Hello, I'm Ariotney and that's not how you spell my bloody name. The story in Parappa 2 is that food is transforming into noodles. Parappa has become sick of noodles because of a lifetime supply he got at a burger shop. And all the while, he's trying to become more manly for his girlfriend, Sunny Funny. At least, I think she's his girlfriend in this game. His beat is funky as all hell. PJ DJ knows what he's doing. And most of the time, Parappa songs are good because they're catchy and have silly lyrics. This song is like that. But sometimes there are some lines that go harder than they should. Considering the whole thing is a discussion on noodles and how you should be more open-minded with food. In parentheses, let me stress the fact clearly. No matter what the deal, I crave for this dearly. The so-called noodles that you find in spaghetti are sweeter than idols, do damage like machetes. Without a doubt, I got the flow coming at July. Bring the place alive every single day I die. With the thought comes my direct actions. Ask my followers, they'll say it's an addiction. Slurp it, suck it. funky video game music. Here's a boss battle with an angry saxophone. I don't know why he's angry, but at the same time, we don't know why Rayman has magical gloves that function as hands and pasta hair. So there you go. And as you'd expect from a game with an entire world dedicated to music, 
The instrumental work was definitely done. And thank France for that. This is overall a very funky song, like I said. And despite me having mixed feelings on this game, the soundtrack's great. Except that damn whistling song. It's, it, gets, it gets really annoying. The map theme in this game is good. And I love infiltrating the pirate ship from Rayman 2. But in terms of Rayman music, this one wins by a mile or so for me. These here songs from 5th to 2nd could be swapped around in any order and I'd be cool with it. Obviously there was going to be a Sonic game appearing on this list and this spot has been passed around a bunch during the making of this video. Spring Yard Zone, Marble Zone and it was about to be Casino Night. Then one day I was playing Sonic 3 and stumbled across the legend that is Hydrocity Zone. Well not just the stage but the music as well. Act 1 to be specific. The Act 2 remix is fine, listenable, but this is better. Classic Sonic games have some of the most funky yet relaxing music in all of video games, and Hydrocity is no exception. It really shows that this song was mainly composed by the man, the myth, the uncredited Michael Flippin Jackson. He also named his son Blanket. The song delivers the same vibe as Spring Yard Zone, but stronger, more funky, and more sonic. Please help me, I'm becoming an advert. Honourable mention to Studiopolis Zone Act 1 from Sonic Mania, which is one of the best games ever. Yeah. The original Spyro the Dragon has one of my favourite game soundtracks of all time. And number four on this list just so happens to go to Dark Hollow. Yes, I'm aware that it's March. There are a good handful of songs from the Spyro games that I do really like. That, you know, couldn't make it in. Stone Hill, Sonic Flight, Town Square, uh, Nasty Norks theme, the, the main theme. Spyro 2's Colossus, or Spyro 3's Sheila's Alp, oh, oh, and Spyro 2 Idol Springs. Awesome song. But, you know what? I like Dark Hollow more than those songs. So, yeah. Have that with chips. The song is so relaxing, orchestral, and oh my giraffe, that dun 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 is everything. The end.
a very memorable game. Again with the damn PS1. And when I first started playing, the one thing that stuck out to me most, it wasn't Tombi's wacky character design, the amazing visual style with the art and all that, or the actual level. It wasn't anything like that, as awesome as those things are. It was this goddamn bouncy, trouncy, ouncy, pouncy, fun, 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 fun song in the Village of All Beginnings. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it, and, and you can watch this little cartoon thing. But for the silver medal, it's time to move away from the world of peppy cave boys and baby chicks and kill some goddamn hellspawn. I've only played a bit of the first theme and so far I really like it, but before I really played it I was in the circle of game song goes viral to the point where people care more about a select song than an entire game. And this spot originally went to At Doom's Gate, but as great as that song is, I've ended up giving second place to the only thing they fear is you. I own Doom Eternal on PS4, but I haven't played it yet. But I think that kind of adds to the effect of this song. The energy that this track brings is monumental and is only beaten by one song on this list. Otherwise, it wouldn't be second, which you probably knew. Otherwise, you're a bit of a numpty, aren't you? This has got to be one of the best songs to listen to when you wake up. It would just kind of pump you up for the day and make you feel like nothing stands in your way. It certainly wakes you up as well. And I'll be honest, usually I can't stand metal. But like this. This song is just bloody amazing. You thought you could get away from Crash Bandicoot, did you? Cute. I love Crash Bandicoot music, and there are so many songs in this franchise that I must shout out. Heavy Machinery, Regenerator Room, Crash Dash, Rocket, Ace of Space, Boneyard, Under Pressure, Time Twister, Hog Ride, Bruise Tubes, Pogo Padlocks, Lip Slide, Ice Capades, Road to Rowan, Smokey and the Bandicoot, Jungle Jam, Wizards and Lizards, Compactor, Reactor, Cortex and Crash 2, Big Fight 2, Happily Ever Faster, GBA, Baron Ruins, Pressureless, Preamble, CNK 2, but even with how much I love all of those songs that I just mentioned, if you could keep up with me, my number one spot on the list goes to... 
Fahrenheit Frenzy from The Wrath of Cortex. This is my favourite song ever. Another bloody amazing one. And the constant build up and transition of the song gives me the feeling like it's a machine firing up, preparing to destroy Crash once and for all. Or like the level itself is boiling up. It gives off the vibe of running and jumping through hell and that things are getting serious. It's almost like the game says to you, you got this far already? Well I'm here to end this. Prepare to be reduced to ashes. Almost like breaking the fourth wall. It knows you will screw up. It knows you will die. It all fits so well with the theme of fire. And that is why it's my favourite song of all time, not just in games. And yeah, in terms of actual gameplay, I love Breath of Cortex as a whole. And those were 20 of my favourite songs from games. Bugger off. Yeah, these were my top 20 songs from games with an asterisk because it's one per series. So as you'd expect, there were a lot of songs that didn't make the cut. Uh, Lavender Town from the Game Boy Pokemon games. Uh, um, the main theme from Uncharted. I remember there being a good combat theme in Uncharted, but I can't find it on YouTube. Um, Windmill Song from Klonoa, Dwarf Village from Tombi. Uh, I remember the um, the Leprechaun Song from um, Spyro Season of Flame being quite good, but I, I could go on for so long um, about about this stuff. But like. But, you, you know, only got... Uh, don't want to waste your time or anything. Surprised if you're still... Be surprised if you're still here. For those in the know, this is a re-upload. But um, I deleted the original upload. Because it got a copyright claim and I can't be bothered. And with that, that's that's the end. That's the end. I'm... I'm, I'm got... See, see, bleh.